Hi, my name is Prabhu Agrawal, and I welcome you all today at the Kubernetes Community Days Chennai. I am thankful and very excited to be a part of this event, which is happening for the first time. I believe you all must be familiar with Cube Scheduler, and I have got an interesting and fairly newer tool called Cube Scheduler Simulator to present amongst you. Before we move forward, a little bit about me. I work as a DevOps engineer at IBM ISL for the IBM Kubernetes service, and those are my different handles to reach out to me on Twitter, GitHub, and Slack. For today's agenda, we have what is Kube Scheduler Simulator, its different components and its architecture, how it works, and a little demo to show how to get started. With. Kubernetes Scheduler is one of the main master components responsible for scheduling pods onto the worker nodes. The scheduler may look as one, but it's made of small different parts doing clockwork to stay everything put. For the cluster admins, the scheduler may always look like a single component running either as a pod or a service on master nodes. But when it comes to visualizing how scheduler actually works, it's pretty hard to do so well now we have cube scheduler simulator which can easily help us in visualizing how to create edit delete of pods nodes volumes which works by simulating inside a cluster cube scheduler simulator is a kubernetes six project which is maintained under six scheduling it's an open source project which is written in go and it can run very well locally using docker or the docker compose it mainly focuses on visualizing resource creation from kts scheduler's perspective we can simulate the creation of different resources like nodes pods storage class and volumes the node assignment of pods by scheduler is done on the basis of scores and filter plugins but in the cube scheduler simulator we have custom filter or score plugins which are used in the place of default plugins we can also configure custom scheduler configuration by either passing the configuration file or we can use the default scheduler scheduler simulator has a web ui which can be used to try out the behavior of scheduler and check the working of plugins as well using the web interface you can create a new resource like node pod priority class or the storage class and we can see the result of the scheduling in this section we will see the ui in detail once we move forward in today's presentation we will mainly be taking a look at how scheduler simulator works how to get started with it by installing in local let's take a look at the different components involved in the cube scheduler simulator once the cube scheduler simulator is bootstrapped using the docker compose it basically creates three containers one is the hcd server another one is the simulator server or the actual backend server and the other one is the front end server the backend server which is also called as the simulator server executes the cube api server at first since the cube api server is the brain of any kubernetes cluster it is followed by the persistent volume controller which will help in maintaining the persistent volumes across the cluster then it also triggers the scheduler which is the default scheduler which comes with the cube scheduler simulator and then the simulator server is initiated which will help us in actually visualizing how the different resources are uh, scheduled inside the kubernetes cluster we also have a web ui just like we saw in the previous slide in the hcd server 
which acts as the default data store for the uh, the whole project and this is the architecture diagram of the scheduler simulator the main components are the simulator server so as soon as we execute the docker compose up it basically executes the api server at first the api server then triggers the persistent volume controller which is followed by the scheduler which is the default scheduler inside the cluster and then the simulator server these are the different api endpoints which are also registered once the simulator server or the respective component has been created or executed we can directly get the metadata or the other information by querying these endpoints uh, running inside the uh, scheduler simulator for the installation we can simply give the following command by after cloning the uh, project into our local which we'll just see in the demo which is the make docker build end up and it will start building all the three containers which will involve the hcd scheduler simulator and the front end and now Uh, we'll see the demo we will first see the installation of the uh, scheduler simulator in my local and then i will run the uh, docker compose in my local machine so that we can execute the scheduler simulator in the uh, in the real time so i'll follow the guide as mentioned in the Uh, scheduler simulator github repo so we basically need to clone the project and then we'll simply give the command as mentioned here either make docker build end up or make start so make docker build end up would basically trigger the uh, docker compose Uh, file and will try to create all the uh, containers as mentioned in it so it will try to create the simulator server the simulator front end and the hcd in the interest of time i already have the project cloned in my local and i will try to uh, run the docker compose command So we'll wait uh, while the containers are being bootstrapped. And it is done. So uh, you can see that uh, three new containers have been added uh, just now. Whereas the first one is mentioned, it's of HCD running at the version 3.4. Then the uh, simulator server, which is the uh, backend server uh, for our project, and the simulator front end, where which will be running the uh, simulator UI. So UI would be accessible at the port uh, 3000. so what i would do is i would just uh, reset it
and I will delete the existing resources and then we will try to create fresh resources from scratch. <coughs> so you can see on this UI uh, we can basically create either a new storage class, new priority class, new persistent volume claim or the new node or new pod. So we will start by creating new nodes. So once you click on the new node option it will basically uh, give you an editor where you can uh, put in the details of the uh, memory specification or the uh, CPU you want your node to be configured with. So I will not change it and will try to schedule it with the default values. And if you click on the node you can basically see all the relative information with respect to the newly created node. So it says that the phase is uh, running for the uh, node. Now I will try to create another new node with the same configuration. The node 2 will also be having the same status. Now I will create a new pod. So uh, by default, the pod which will be created uh, will be based on the pause uh, container image. And I will just try to minimize it to some 2M of CPU and 1 or maybe 2 gigs of RAM. And you can see all the other default uh, information mentioned which is the uh, termination message path, uh, image pull policy and then the DNS policy and then I will apply. Uh, you can see that the pod has been scheduled on the uh, node 1 and now I will create another pod with a little change in the uh, configuration we will keep it as uh, 5 and and 5 gigs of RAM and it will also be having the same configuration apart from the uh, resources uh, as compared to the other pod now we will go and see the uh, first pod uh, which has been created just now and you can see that the few uh, fields have been added uh, apart from the resource definition fields so one is the filter by default uh, the uh, filters defined for our both of nodes uh, are like uh, azure disk limits uh, interpod affinity, node affinity. So these are all the uh, by default uh, filters uh, which are defined as the uh, as part of the cube scheduler uh, basic configuration. And then if we check the score, so uh, here it says that the uh, scores are defined on few or, or the certain factors. Uh, which is the image locality, uh, interpod affinity, node affinity, uh, node resources balance allocation, resources fit, port topology spread and uh, taint tolerance. But in our case, since we did not define any of the uh, interpod affinity or node affinity or even port topology spread, so we could see that the, the values are termed as zeros in that case. Whereas for the node resource balance allocation and node resource aspect, we have a default value of 96, which is a, a score. And then at the end, we basically have uh, a sum of uh, the finalized or the normalized and the applied uh, uh, plugin scores. So here, 
we can see again that uh, uh, balanced allocation and resource fit are again as 96 but the power topology spread and tain toleration have been termed as 100 and 200 for each node So, to understand the plugin or uh, filter score allocations, uh, which we saw just now in the cube scheduler simulator uh, UI uh, for each and every pod, we need to understand the motivation behind scheduling of pods onto the different nodes. The scheduling of pods onto the nodes are managed in two phases. One is the scheduling cycle, and the other one is the binding cycle. The scheduling cycle it selects a node for the pod and uh, binding cycle it applies the decision the to the cluster and we also have few extension points like pre filter filter post filter pre score score and the normalized score all these plugins are used for various reasons like filtering out the nodes that cannot run the pod some for pre scoring work uh, which generates a state for plugins to use and some are used to rank the nodes that have uh, passed the filtering phases. The scheduler it eventually calls each scoring plugin before it binds the pods onto the respective nodes and the allocation is done based on the best score value calculated. <coughs> So before we move on to the next part of our presentation, I will try to bring down the uh, existing setup which I have in my uh, local. And to do that, I will basically call a docker down command uh, from the make file. And as you can see, it has started uh, stopping all the three containers, uh, which is the HCD, uh, the front end server, and the back end server. And it has been cleaned up now. So, moving on to the next part, uh, we have a few other implementations being done for the scheduler simulator uh, recently. The project was earlier using uh, GitHub Actions to run its uh, CI checks, which were mostly being triggered as part of the uh, PR and push based uh, checks. And uh, there were some works done to migrate to Prow, which is a Kubernetes based or the uh, Kubernetes community maintained tool uh, to have the CI uh, streamlined with a very common tool uh, throughout the org. So currently the CI part of a scheduler simulator is being handled uh, using Kubernetes Prow. And the uh, end to end test for the uh, scheduler simulator which is currently in progress, uh, these will focus in uh, testing all the uh, different uh, components of the shell simulator like the cube api server or the response return from the cube api server cube scheduler uh, whether there was a node or uh, pod created properly or not so if you are interested in uh, knowing more about the uh, scheduler simulator you can always follow the project link there is a whole a lot of documentation available uh, which will be helpful for the uh, beginners to get started with uh, there is a guide uh, mentioned in the root of uh, mentioned in the readme of the project uh, which will help 
in uh, getting started on how to use schedule a simulator how to bootstrap it locally we also have uh, a doc section which uh, basically uh, explains how the schedule a simulator works uh, the different configuration you can use for uh, cube api server and uh, if you are interested in checking the responses of the different apis exposed uh, you can also check this section few links to uh, follow the project link is there then the documentation link is also there uh, you can always reach out the maintainers uh, of schedule simulator on uh, six scheduling channel over the uh, kubernetes slack and uh, that's all for the presentation i hope uh, you would have enjoyed uh, uh, knowing a few things about uh, schedule simulator it's a really good tool if you're looking for some help in uh, understanding and visualizing how uh, schedule works and the different components around it works the community is always looking for uh, new contributors uh, who can come and uh, uh, pick up issues and start working on it it will be very great Uh, to have uh, different folks working on it uh, once again i would like to extend my thanks for giving me a chance to present hey prabha thanks for the insightful session it was really helpful and um, uh, in the end you said like you are uh, welcoming contributor so uh, one question that i have around is uh, uh what is the skill set that you are looking for as in like say if i have to be a contributor what is the minimum requirement that you would expect for us to contribute in your space so to contribute in uh, any project under uh, kubernetes uh, you can basically start afresh even if you don't know uh, go that much or you're not that much aware about kubernetes you can start helping with the documentation or uh, maybe bash scripts which are used for uh, end to end testing or ci cd ci cd part so there is always always way uh, up the ladder from there and if you are really interested in uh, go development you can pick up few issues which are around uh, core uh, uh, helping with the go code uh, otherwise uh, in any of the project under kubernetes uh, you can find your way in for scheduler simulator uh, similarly Uh, you can always help in the documentation part there is front end part uh, which you must have seen uh, just now in the presentation if you are good with javascript or if you have keen interest in that you can also pick up issues uh, around there then we have uh, apis uh, written in go uh, you can pick up issues around there as well and uh, there is a lot of work going on with respect to end to end testing uh, which i mentioned uh, if you really like to have you know just knowledge around bash scripts Uh, you can uh, pick your way up from there as well sure prabha that answers my question thanks a lot so um, uh, participants like do you have any questions prabha is around and he is ready he'll be more than happy to help you guys so uh, one thing i would mention is uh, uh, please take part uh, in any of the uh, community meetings uh, for six scheduling uh, those happen uh, every other thursday Uh, around 10:30 pm uh, india time and there is one which happens uh, for the apac uh, the asia pacific every uh, month uh, like first thursday of every month so uh, you can reach out to me on slack i can share all the details and uh, any other uh, community member which is available on slack you can always reach out uh, for help and uh, please don't hesitate to ask any questions uh, the community is very friendly as you must have been aware of okay Sure, Prabha. So on, one of the participants is already like he is interested to contribute. So, uh, so you have already answered that you you are reachable in Slack. So, is there any other channel that we can reach uh, reach out to you, or is it is uh, only Slack, or you are you are active in LinkedIn? Yeah, I am active on LinkedIn. Uh, my Gmail uh, email address would be there, mm -hmm. or I can uh, uh, have them uh, uh, via you. Mm -hmm. uh the other ways would be twitter i'm active on twitter as well these days so yeah cool uh, like all these three four things 
Cool, brother. I I have a personal question. I'll wrap it up. I'll have the last question. So I like this idea of simulator. So how? What was the starting point? As in, like, what was the spark to come up with a simulator? Because generally, people don't. We we all tend to work in CLI, and we generally don't, or rather, not have the requirement to have a simulator as such. But how do you think that you want to come up with a simulator, and where did this idea come up from? So, uh, you know, I may not be the best person to answer this because I am not the one who started this project. Uh, but it basically came out as a GSOC uh, project. And uh, the main idea was to uh, have a, a showcase kind of, uh, which can help people to really visualize uh, how the different plugins and the dif different scoring happens when you're trying to assign pods uh, to a different node or like onto, or to distribute to different nodes. Uh, from the scheduler side, because we would always read in the documentation and uh, we can see in the cluster that the pod goes to node A, node B. But in actually, uh, how does it look like uh, if it is to uh, happen somehow, right? Yeah. So that was the main intention behind it. Uh, the project is still growing. Uh, we are adding different uh, new components, uh, different uh, uh, support for different custom plugins. You may be able to write your own uh, simulator one day. So uh yeah it is uh good cool. from there cool sure sure thanks thanks a lot Prabhu. you have answered all the questions and the session was very insightful and helpful and hope you. your participants are benefited as well thanks thanks a lot thank you have a good day bye yeah you too enjoy the rest of the sessions yeah, yeah thanks you too